Greetings folks, I'm here with my friend Martin Anastasovsky. Uh, we're going to do a little chat later, but first we're up here on the top of Vodno and you can see Scorpia or parts of Scorpia, even though there are trees uh, in front of us. We're going to go down later from a better perspective for you to see all of Scorpia, but in the meantime I wanted you all to see of the Macedonian mountains ringing Scorpia and even though there are trees here, for you to see the sprawling metropolis that's become modern Skopje. So folks, as part of the complex up here, there's a reception center and uh, is it a hotel? It used to be a hotel. used to be a hotel, but this is a beautiful church, Sveti Mala Bogrodica. I'm just going to show you a little bit of the church here, folks. Looks like uh, it's been built quite a while ago. It's very nice inside. Wow, nice is an understatement. Look at all these beautiful frescoes. Wow. I'm glad we walked in. And I hope people, when they come to Macedonia, come and see this incredible place. Oh, we're back, folks. We found a, a beautiful spot, nice bench up on Vodno. I'm going to chat with Martin, but uh, I want to tell a story first. I ran into a Turkish Macedonian in, in Stada Çarşıya, and he confronted me with a very interesting perspective. He said, hey, you Macedonians overseas, in the diaspora, you beat your chest, you promote your patriotism at every opportunity, but not many of you come back and invest, stay here, work here, to contribute to the country's economy and its future. So, you know, the Albanians do. They go overseas, but they come back and build their villages up, beautiful houses here and there. Well, Martin, my friend Martin, is one of those rare Macedonians who came back to Macedonia from... Martin, how are you, brother? I'm doing okay, Jovan. Tell me something about your journey yeah. from here, there and back. Where, where yes. were you born? Uh, where are you from? Where did you go? And what have you studied yeah. and so on? Um, and why you came back? Why I came back? <coughs> sure. I was born in Skopje. Um, and I moved to the United <coughs> States uh, together with my family in 2000 and at the time I was 14 so I went uh, straight to the uh, second year of high school uh, in the US uh, in, a, in a you know decently sized uh, Macedonian community in Garfield New Jersey uh, but just that general area and so I got a taste of uh, you know um, both the United States and the Macedonian community there. Uh, it was very interesting to make comparisons between Macedonia and uh, uh, and and my new newly adopted home. Um, so I, I studied there. I studied political science. Um, I was inspired to uh, to study politics and international relations uh, uh, by the idea that um, you know I can. I can learn uh, that trade and, and somehow contribute to Macedonia because I was uh, emotionally tied to uh, my life, the life that I had here. Can I interrupt uh, you here? You yeah, said to yeah. me that you also thought that your contribution there would probably be insignificant, that you might not make the type of contribution that you could if you come back here. And that's what really impressed me. I thought mm -hmm. that was a very... Uh, intelligent and uh, uh, interesting observation. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad that uh, it came across uh, like that. But um, you know, I was with my body. I was living in the U.S. and I had a really good time. You know, <coughs> it's it's a wonderful country. It's um, um, I had a very rich experience there. You know, um, um I I. I didn't have it in me, and it, it wasn't my wish to uh, to really make money. And and you you 
you could make money you can make money uh, if you if you do hard work <clears throat> you come up with an original plan or a determination to start a business uh, but I wasn't for that um, somehow I was drawn to um, to Macedonia to this idea that um, you know just uh, like one year after I, uh, me and my family moved to the US uh, there was the armed conflict in uh, in Macedonia in 2001 and this also inspired me to uh, to you know like to to look at the society here and and just uh, examine it and, and question things and question things again uh, and see um, you know what we can do to um, what can well, what can I do as, as an individual to to, to help things you know so that um, the country is peaceful so that you know knowing the, the learning about the history of Macedonia and the Macedonians uh, as an ethnic group back then um, I, I realized that um, there is a trajectory of uh, of uh, you know foreign influences and that uh, the, the Macedonians as a nation are vulnerable uh, to foreign influences to to um, to propaganda to conquest and all that and you know just to to um, say something on a personal on a, on a more personal note I come from a Macedonian and Turkish uh, Macedonian family and so my my um, my inspiration was never this hardcore nationalism that <clears throat> this is the land only of the Macedonians and they should rule over everybody you know inspired by by the US and and by the um, by these um, by society by the by the societies that are evident in in, in Western cultures in Western countries where uh, there is a civic society and that that people can be themselves and and make a contribution and and that society is this uh, like thing that is in in flux that mm. people can cooperate across ethnic lines I'm not saying it's perfect you know we all know about uh, you know ethnic genocides all around the world colonialism you know I never had the illusion that uh, that that you know this is it's it's perfect the way it is in the West but mm. I saw what I saw in Macedonia was uh, this potential for a peaceful coexistence uh, which for the most part I think has been the case uh, between all the people uh, that have settled in Macedonia and but yeah given that you know given my, my, my ethnic and cultural heritage um, I am for Macedonia I um, I stand for uh, Macedonians uh, because I think that uh, there has been a historic injustice committed against Macedonians you know and I believe that that many here uh, who are not ethnic Macedonians uh, sympathize with the Macedonian cause and they you know it's it's a complicated uh, a political arena in Macedonia and the neighborhood is very complicated we have history of um, of, of foreign countries trying to um, you know through propaganda through uh, the church their respective churches Bulgarian, Bulgarian Serbian and, and, and Greek church and so on uh, to cast their influence and to um, to bring chunks of the Macedonian people to their fault you know this was the only way to justify uh, their uh, basically essentially colonialist pretensions uh, uh, on the Macedonian land and of course they had to convince the Western powers that that oh these people are Greeks or Bulgarian and so on so they did their thing you know so yeah. in, in Macedonia uh, I, I, I think uh, j just to say this I think uh, uh, over the years I think the uh, the people in Macedonia have have become uh, more aware and more educated in this regard um, thanks to the internet you know and <clears throat> because uh, back you know like like 15 years ago if you cared to learn about history you could go into books and, and try to um, try to like digest all of this information on your own now there is you know there is a lot of evidence and it's without any doubt you know I believe in the core of my heart that the Macedonians were their own people yeah they were 
uh, you know, their own kind. It shows in the culture, yep. in the language, in the mannerism, even in the sense of humor, you know. So, so yeah, this is the reason. This is one of the reason reasons why I committed to um, coming back and to, to to coming back and and I answered basically. I responded to my calling to you know to come here and 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 bring a positive influence in the ways that I can. So, the beauty about Macedonia is the fact that uh, our tradition is one of the acceptance of multiculturalism. You know, it's enshrined in the Vimero proclamation and constitution. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, it seems, in a way, it seems to be backfiring these days. But I agree with you, it must be persevered with, that we can't turn back and become like a 19th century type of nation where yeah. we try to eradicate yeah. all the minorities. Yeah. However, having said all that, we don't live in a vacuum, we also live in the world. And there are greater forces than all the communities in Macedonia. There are greater forces that influence our destiny. And now, a lot of people here think that uh, we're masters of our own destiny. Do you think that we are masters of our own destiny or do you think we're victims of hmm. yeah. colonial forces? Yeah, this is a very interesting way to <coughs> um, to uh, to set the question. <coughs> uh, I think both, uh, because um, the Macedonians don't have a tradition of institutions, and all of the modern nations, you know, including the Greeks, the Bulgarians, and so on. Um, you know, I'm sorry to say, but uh, but there has been a lot of nation building. In, yes, in, in, yes, in these Greece countries. is from 1820s, yeah. uh, 1880s, yeah. uh, Bulgaria, and so yeah. on. Uh, for example, the uh, the San Stefano Treaty that established an independent Bulgarian state uh, wasn't attended by a single Bulgarian. <laughs> you know, it was all um, outsiders. Yeah, you know, outsiders from from the west, mm. and, and I, I believe uh, there were Turks present. You know, mm. as representatives mm. of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, so what I'm saying is, is that um, is that the nations that came to negate the Macedonian identity, uh, uh, the the right for the Macedonians to to determine their own uh, uh, destiny yep. by by way of creating and building their own own culture on the basis of what they had and what they knew about themselves, yep. which has been proclaimed in it has been evidenced in in, in various uh, texts. Yep. Uh, even even in, in earlier uh, in like like dating from the 16th and 17th century, the Macedonians were listed as a separate by, identity, as a separate uh, uh, people. Yeah. Um. So, so you know, this was uh, very uh, perilous to uh, to the process of nation building that the Macedonians didn't have uh, cultural uh, and and governmental institutions. Um, the Vomero, you know, Gotsedolchev. Uh, Nikola Karev, Georgi Petrov, Dame Gruev, Sandansky, and and not not only not only them, you know, yeah. uh, Pavel Shatev and so on. Yeah. The, these these figures, um, they try to establish institutions, you know, uh, but but it was very difficult to uh, to succeed because uh, they were part the, of the Ottoman Empire. Then, despite that, they had their own court system. They had postal service. Yeah. They had like yeah. a. Uh, a parallel government. Yeah, they they tried. Yeah. No, they tried really yeah. hard. They made an uh, an honest attempt to uh, to to uh, create a system within the system, mm -hmm. and it worked to an extent. But we also have to take into consideration uh, the geography. Uh, perhaps in in antiquity, uh, the the ancient Macedonians this geography uh, served to their favor uh, because it gave them protection from. Uh, from from like persistent attacks from from tribes from the outside, mm -hmm. and when I say Macedon ancient Macedonians, I mean all of the people that were allied with the Macedonians, yes. like the Paeonians who yeah. formed the basis of the ancient Macedonian uh, ethnicity stratum, yeah. uh, the Agrianians, and there were a few different tribes. They were on the land <coughs> of, of uh, geographic Macedonia. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so the hills and the mountains, it it it, uh, it gave them beautiful pastures. And the valleys gave them um, 
fertile soil. Hills, yeah. yeah, but two thirds of, of Macedonia is covered in hills and mountains. And back in the revolutionary times, it was very difficult to get a message across. You know, yep. so if you want to inform the other village or, or, or you know, like people in in, in few you know, in a distance, you know, from where you are, about your plans, what to do next, you have to travel by foot. Mm. It took days. Yeah, you know, and whereas um, it was different in Greece, it's a coastal country. You know, boats yeah, can boats can travel correct. faster, perhaps. I mean, probably. Yeah, and most of their cities were coastal cities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bulgaria is, you know, one half is a mountain, the Rhodopi Mountains. Yep. The other half is a is a field. Is a field, you know, um, and, and so is Serbia. So you spur your horse and you can zip back and forth, and, right. and you can amass an army and so on. So, yep. so why I'm saying this, uh, when when people under various influences um, have been um, impressed with this. Um, notion that oh the macedonians didn't have it in them to to really like stand up and fight well you know that's really not the case yeah. it was very difficult to to put up to a organize fight, to organize it was um they had it's not like they didn't have the courage you know they stood up against an empire you yeah. know that's it's yeah. and, one of and, the and, greatest and, empires in the history absolutely. of the world and, and not only an empire they stood they stood against uh, foreign propaganda mm. uh against uh uh, the Bulgarians uh, army, the Greek army, uh, the Albanian gangs, um, you know, a everybody all around Serbia. So I, I see the Macedonian people as courageous, very courageous. At the same time, uh, there is this um, element of humaneness. Um, you know, before the uh, the Ilinden uprising, which was very hurriedly organized, mm -hmm. you know, again, the mm -hmm. foreign propaganda <clears throat> did its... its uh, it's numbers on the Macedonian cause there. Um, it was, uh, everybody was instructed uh, not to uh, take up revenge against uh, Turks and Muslims. That's right. Know? So there were to be no looting, no yeah. killing, mm -hmm. um, and, and they respected that, you know. So, so like, like you said before, uh, this, there is this um, uh, multicultural uh, quality, which I'm not saying it's perfect, you know, maybe you don't see it to the fore uh, in, 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 in society right now, you know, you, we, we don't have these like multicultural alliances, but there is the potential to do that. Um, so because, that, because so, of so, the, so that Macedonia can realize its own potential. Yeah, because you know? of the ideological foundations, like we're like a multicultural state before multicultural states even began in in the most multicultural places of the world, like the yeah. colonial world, the English in yeah. America. Yeah, I, where I, there are I, I see of that. Yeah. Yeah, for, for example, um, you know, <coughs> um, in the nation building process in, in, uh, in the United Kingdom, for example, you know, they, they did try to suppress languages. You know, the, the Breton language in, in France, mm. you know, the Celtic language, mm. and uh, all these like. Um, dialects and, and, and types in France. Uh, I think it was Charles de Gaulle, he said, uh, like something along the lines of how, how can you run a country with 40 different types of cheese? And mm, he was referring mm. to different peoples, uh, peoples you know, yeah. these like uh, tabieti yeah. of, 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 of the local you know, yeah. identities and whatnot. And in Macedonia, amazingly, you know, all the, uh, all the villages that have Turkish names, they they were not reverted back to <coughs> the original Macedonian. They didn't do names. what they did in in Greece, for they, example. They didn't. They didn't. So, you know, it's e even though uh, a large uh, number of Turks migrated, they packed up, they they went to mm -hmm. Turkey, and they still appreciate their uh, Macedonian, like partial Macedonian origins, like being yeah. from Macedonia. Yeah. They yeah. went back. Yeah. You know. So that's something. This is something that we can work with. And I and, think, um, you and know, I think it's something to be proud of too. You know, uh, it's it's a modern idea. It's and, and it's it's not a fascist idea. It's not about the unity of blood with soil and all that. It's a, an appreciation of the reality of the world that we all have lived together since a time of yeah. who knows how yeah. long. Well, well, for the for the really hardcore Macedonian nationalists who you know pride themselves on their ethnic Macedonian heritage. 
and and I am you know convinced I believe that there is a, a, a fairly sizable element. You know, it's, it's it's in there the are. it's in the physiognomy. Yeah. You see some dark people, some some uh, fair you know people, and yep. so so there is that. Uh, but but to them, uh, I I can say, you know, Alexander the Great, he wanted to build a multicultural uh, a multicultural, a multicultural empire. Mm. So uh, if you want to, uh, you know, um, if you want to be a descendant of Macedonian, the Great yeah. Alexander, then yeah. you have to accept. Yeah, well, His ideology. well at, at least entertain this idea that yeah. that you know uh, maybe we should uh, try to uh, get friendlier with all of our neighbors here in, in Macedonia, and uh, because look, there is something about uh, humankind, about our, our species. Um, all the Western countries, you know, some somewhat due to war uh, and to the loss of of, of males, uh, but also somewhat due to. Um, this you know inexplicable need to have diversity in in your living space mm. you know they've opened their borders to uh to a lot of people from from the former colonies and current uh, current at the time colonies yeah so there were people who were of african descent indian descent pakistani from all over the place yeah so i i you know i get this feeling that that they had the feeling that they want to diversify their their capital cities mm. you know mm. and macedonia doesn't have to uh, because it has been to a, a, a fairly no, notable extent di diverse. You yeah. know? Well, now some some people can argue, you know, like I said, this is not a, it, it's it's not perfect. It's, it's not a given, you know. But uh, for example, uh, like some Albanians will say, uh, "Oh, but we're indigenous to these lands," mm. you know, <clears throat> and and. We all have to address this. You know, look at the Turkish, um, the Ottoman um, uh, population census books, and see the migration patterns. You know, when some people arrived there. To look at the the given names to people. Yeah. You know, um, I've I've studied some of these books uh, for the uh, <clears throat> the Solunska Casa. You know, for for all the um, the villas that that overlap with Macedonia. And it's very interesting that in some places, like in around Solon, you can see uh, Greek and and Macedonian names, yeah, and and some Albanian names, which are non-Muslim Albanians yeah. at, at the time. You know, so it's very interesting that that not just Macedonia, but maybe all of the Balkans was was really multicultural and and multi-ethnic, and that these identities were fluid. People knew like like you know who they were or, or who they weren't and it could have been so that they were two things at the same time this is a possibility you know the so so just just to, just to finish yep. to wrap this up um the nation building process in greece in in bulgaria it it did away with with all of that you know yep. it created a monolithic ethnic structure out of yeah. what used to be a very multicultural people could have been Macedonian and Greek at the same time. It would have been a beautiful thing. Or mm. Vlach, Vlach and Macedonian, or mm. Greek and Vlach, Albanian, Greek, whatever, you know? <laughs> you, you see what I mean? Like, thankfully, uh, from my perspective, um, in Macedonia, we uh, succeeded to preserve uh, this aspect of our humanity. And, yeah. Well, what I was going to say was that uh, the interesting thing about uh, Greece is that it was very multicultural and then they invited even a further as a group of people who they too were multicultural and the only thing that defined Greek was their orthodoxy yeah. and that's, in, that's how they defined it, that's not how I defined it. When you speak about the people in Solunska with the Greek mm -hmm. villages According to Finlay, who is the, uh, um, I guess, the person who wrote the definitive history of the Greek Revolution, mm -hmm. he's a Scots Philhellene, who became, um, I think, the first chancellor of the University of Athens. He writes that the only place there were Greek-speaking villages were in the Halkidiki. And that, iron ironically enough, is that where the original Greek colonies were in Greece. So they did not extend further out. The idea of Greek at one point becomes 
a, ci- a person from a city, a civilized mm-hmm. person. Yeah, yeah. So to be Greek isn't really an ethnicity. To be Greek was a, a creation, a new eth- ethnicity. Now we Macedonians, we're trying, to, we're trying to be pure, but at the same time inclusive. And that's what you keep saying is our humanity. I, I like that. But is it, is it tenable in the future to have people not speaking the same language, to have two or three different official mm-hmm. languages? Mm-hmm. Is, it, is it possible to go ahead with that? Uh, <coughs> Especially given we're only two million people or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, <coughs> um, I think that... Um, uh, is it tenable? <coughs> I think it's tenable. Um, there is no issue with people speaking different languages uh, because uh, I'll tell you the um, the conditions uh, of Macedonian society in respect to language. Um, Albanians speak and understand uh, Macedonian. Mm-hmm. Macedonians don't understand, understand and don't speak Albanian. Um, Turks um, understand Macedonian and speak it. You know, the Roma, you know, the, the mm-hmm. so-called gypsies, they, they speak fairly <laughs> good Macedonian, you know. Uh, Macedonians speak uh, English, mm. so it's a very diverse uh, uh, tapestry of, uh, of languages and people adopt a language according to their needs. You know, if somebody um, is in business or if, if they interact with a different uh, group, uh, they learn the, their language. I hope that it will be to the benefit of, of, of Macedonians if, if we learn some Albanian, you know, mm. it's why, why, why shouldn't we, mm. you know. Um, I mean, wh- whoever wants to, you know. It should not be imposed, is what you're saying. Uh, it, it shouldn't be imposed, but there should be... Um, a desire. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it shouldn't be looked uh, down upon, um, the possibility of, of learning some, some Albanian, you mm. know. Every language is a, is a treasure, you know, this is what, what they say. Um, so, in the long run, I think, um, when finally... Um, the people of Macedonia start to realize that uh, that our differences can can unite us in a way that it will make it possible to cooperate uh, in business, in developing tourism, improving the healthcare system. You know, then in that case, uh, a multinational, not in the sense of multinational corporation, mm-hmm. but a multinational business between. Any any of the people here in Macedonia could do can do business in in Albania and Kosovo and in Bulgaria and Greece and and beyond, you know. So, um, but but on the other hand, I'm not ignorant of the fact and 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 you know people generally are not ignorant of, of the fact that uh, these uh, linguistic identities and ethnic identities are. Um, it's it's basically it's, it's a numbers game in Macedonia mm-hmm. now. You know it's uh, you know the population that grows uh, according to the Ocrid framework agreement. You know these percentages are, are counted all the time, and, and the population census was very <coughs> controversial, and and it was a painful thing to uh, uh, to consider uh, regarding its uh, implications. Uh, for for the Macedonians uh, mostly, but also for Albanians, because a lot of Albanians uh, live outside. There are a lot of villages that are Albanian that are half half empty, mm. you know. So it's a lot of people uh, have migrated in in the past twenty years, and some people come back to spend here a few months and, mm-hmm. and so on. We don't understand the clear picture, uh, but what I guess what I'm saying is, and by the way, the census didn't. Um, enable people um, to to um, to state a belonging to two or more ethnicities okay. or, or languages. Right. You know, so for example, if you're a uh, of an Albanian and Turkish uh, uh, you know heritage, you have to state one thing, right. and this is only to the benefit of uh, of the political parties, yeah. which have done very little good to the people to the for, for the good of the people you know i'm saying about i'm talking about the unitary nation uh 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 nature of of the country 
you yeah. know the political parties are they act like political parties they act like you know they they want to all they see is numbers and votes so, so it, could, it serves them and it doesn't serve macedonia and it doesn't paint the right picture either it doesn't paint the right picture yeah so it's what you said it's uh, it's designed to create conflict rather than harmony yeah because if you were to say oh well i'm turkish and albanian or i'm um, Macedonian Muslim and uh, Albanian Absolutely. or whatever, yeah. the picture is more muddied and uh, the situation is not as as, uh, as conflicting. So you're not saying one thing, you're saying, well, I'm a part of this country and I represent this diversity of this country yeah. Yeah. in myself. You know, basically we, we've allowed, uh, we've allowed um, for the census takers and the organizers uh, to, to do to make decisions in in the names of people that they purportedly represent but they don't get the legitimacy of all the people in Macedonia you know not everybody votes actually a lot of people hate voting they they did they, they don't vote so uh, you know to to make to cast somebody this percentage of the population is strictly mono ethnic uh, you know the the ethnic policies don't represent that and this is essentially this is basically what uh what is done in greece and bulgaria uh in albania because there are a lot of macedonians and macedonian albanians mm -hmm, in albania mm -hmm. and macedonian muslims um you know to create this like single mold ethnic national mold you know is the same thing we're doing it now by this census and by the ethnic politics yeah, we're going backwards into time rather than forward in so many ways you know I come from a country town where there were more Albanians and Macedonians than had been there before us. And the relationship between the Macedonians and the Albanians over there were not just cordial, but they were friends and deep friendships. Now, it's so strange that we can do it over there, mm -hmm. be friends, but here, where all I hear is negative things from both, both communities. Both communities will say the Macedonians, Albanians will say Macedonians like this, that's what yeah. I will say. So I don't hear any that much positivity about yeah. the other. And being humans, why can't we accept the difference? Yeah. Why uh, do you, what, we, what, what's yeah. driving that here? Yeah, yeah we, we can accept <clears throat> the difference. I think a lot of, most people can accept the difference. And uh, the, the, the period of maturing of... Um, as a nation? Of, 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 the, of the Macedonian nation, including everybody here. Uh, from the 90s, from the breakup of, uh, of Yugoslavia, from Macedonia's independence, uh, was that, you know, um, we have to take this into consideration, that most Albanians were rural at the time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and most Macedonians were rural until the 50s, when industrialization uh, started to take place. Uh, a lot of people went into cities to work in the factories. Uh, so there's a difference of, of about 30 years. And so the Albanians were really the other mm -hmm. uh, during that period <coughs> because the Albanians were different. You know, people, yep. people saw a stark difference. Yep. You know, uh, and I'm not saying this is good or bad. It, it just was, you know. Yep. And, and I'm. You know, I'm I'm not uh, strictly referring to. Th there were also people who lived in in the cities, in the city quarters. You yeah, know? yeah. But a lot of people were rural. Yes. And so that difference in perceptions, and in in attitudes, you know, how people behaved, how loud they were, you know, how they spoke, and so on, how they dressed, all of these things were visible. Yeah. Um, those differences um, kind of became ironed out. Uh, in the past uh, 15 years, mm -hmm. you know. So now you can see that, uh, um, you know, young people who are from the uh, Muslim areas, Albanian, Turkish, Bosniak, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, they, they dress more or less in the same way, you know. Yep. Yeah. But, but you know, urban culture being a urban culture, uh, people have this like, like laser vision about you know differences and so on but um i think that that generally speaking i think that the the younger generations are seeing through the fog that was created in the 90s and 
and after the the war in Macedonia, after the the conflict, they're seeing beyond the fog, and and you know the questions that linger are why, uh, in all these years after the conflict in two thousand one, there weren't any sizable, meaningful, uh, true to heart uh, nation building essentially efforts to to kind of like uh, reintroduce the people to one another and to uh, take the history of division, uh, which wasn't always a history of division, and to address it in, in fairly um, uh, candid and, and, and open-minded terms. Yeah. You know, for example, the question that Albania since World War II was a bunker country, you know, mm. it, it, it shuttered <coughs> itself out from from everybody else yeah. why was that the case you know why were albanians enclosed in this uh behind this ethnic wall mm. you know and this contributed to the conflict uh in in macedonia and and the conflict you know it's, it's a lot of people see albanians and albanians see macedonians through that conflict yeah and furthermore um because of this uh like a pseudo history, this like memeified history, um, with very dubious sources. You know, people are some people are creating this, um, trying to, you know, I guess we can't escape it here in the Balkans to to root your modern national identity in some ancient past. How far back do you need to uh -uh. go? These people are going back now, two thousand BC, five. I think yeah. it's. I personally think it's ridiculous. But who actually is driving this continuous wedge between the people, and who benefits from it? Yeah. Well, I think some people are unconsciously doing <coughs> it because they're fascinated with history and and they want to uh, to present uh, to to find uh, more differences than similarities. Um, and and you know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, ancient history is. It can be fascinating, you know. It, it, it has an allure yeah, because you can you can transpose yourself back in time and reimagine like this like hero heroic past. Yeah, that's and, right. But you know what? It's and this is both regarding Macedonians and Albanians, since we're and, and Bulgarians, and you Serbs know, and Greeks. And, yeah, all of us in the Balkans are yeah. obsessed with the past. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that you know the, you perform genetic studies <coughs> and you see that there there are elements from this like ancient DNA in the modern nations, but the names of the people were different. You know, the names of the names of the Illyrians were different. The language was is unattested. You know, there are very few words that were written down. Yeah. Uh, some people are trying to find connections with uh, the Macedonian language that we speak today and with ancient ancient Macedonians. And you know, you know, to I'm fairly open minded. You know, there are some patterns and words that that coincide yeah but this is not to say that that uh, was we, 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 we need to or, or, or that we, we need to base our uh, modern our, our, our position regarding the world and everybody else through an ancient identity because we live now I agree. you know this is not Illyria this I is agree. not ancient Macedonia this is not the Bulgarian kingdom or the Serbian kingdom I agree or Byzantium <laughs> We are right now. You know? Well, no, no need to go back to build your uh, disposition, your regard to your neighbors or to yourselves. To 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 you know. That's my position when I speak to uh, people on the net of other countries. That's my position. I say, look, I know who my great grandfather was. I don't really know who the hell Alexander the Great was or was going to be. And what does it matter when most of the world, uh, most of the Western world, has occupied Australia? Uh, the Americas, parts of Africa. If 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 we have to go back to 2000 or 200 or 300 BC to establish a link with this land, then half the world doesn't have a link with where yeah, they're living. Absolutely. Yeah. So what and, do we do there? There is, there is no need to establish anything. I don't think so we, either. We, we live here. We have the right <coughs> to self-determination. And a lot of people will argue, well, uh, Europe and and the the powers that be they they they, they trampled on that right to uh, self-determination you know it's, it's a fact there was a deal between Macedonia and Greece 
and it's you know we, maybe we can get into that as to the um, repercussions of that later but um, I want to go back to a fine point that uh, if, if we want to be stuck in an ancient uh, history we're going to build an ancient looking landscape around us yeah. okay try to go to hospital <laughs> you know uh, to, to I'm saying not not private hospital those yeah, are fine yeah, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but but uh, education the schools you know the condition of some of the villages uh, you know you yeah you want to live in ancient past yeah you, you have it right there there's plenty of mud because you know those ancient peoples had to do with a lot of mud yeah. in their villages you know yeah. Um, so yeah it's fascinating to you know there is a lot of interesting information like you know I was you know, my mind was blown by uh, learning that um, the name Alexander appears in ancient Troy, mm. whose name was mm. originally was uh, Bilusha or mm. Bil Bilusa, mm. you know, mm. Mm. and uh, that uh, Paris, his native name, name was Alexandrus, mm. you know. That's right. So who knows where those Macedonians came to the Balkans and this connection? Was it a Greek name? Was it a Macedonian name? Was it some uh, dynasty that came from 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 a from afar? You know. Uh, so I'm saying it, it is it is interesting. You know, it's fascinating. But but, but, but let's not, not let, yeah. let's let's not allow it to allow us to to get bogged down with, with this. Exactly. We got, we got bigger fish to fry. Exactly. You know. And the bigger fish to fry. One of them is the economy. Yeah. Because as Bill Clinton, one of the few great things he said was, it's the economy stupid. Yeah. And with a shit economy, what can you achieve as a nation? He spoke about the state of our hospitals, the state of roads, the state of our schools, and our infrastructure. That's probably what we should be focusing on rather than who the ancient Macedonians were. Maybe we should clean up our cities, uh, fix our hospitals, yeah. and live like modern people rather than arguing about the past. Yeah. But it yeah. appears to me there are actually people and factions within Macedonia that profit from that. That, that, uh, looking, that looking back just perpetuates a problem for which they are profiting of. Yeah. Yeah. And there is. I think, <coughs> and I think they exist on both sides, not just in the Absolutely. Albanians. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? yeah. So what yeah. we've got it's, to do... Um, it's, it's basically what, what we can do as, as individuals <coughs> is uh, get it inside our head that uh, we have to write the right to decide who we are and how we behave as such, you know, and just just uh, be just be friendly, you know, learn how to be friendly and appreciate what you have, the basics, the basics, mm. you know, uh, the, <clears throat> you know, there is a, a, a fairly decent part of the population in Macedonia that is is very conscious and conscientious you know there's people who create uh, products and, and people who who do business internationally they develop apps and software and so on uh, I mean of course yeah, the, the economy is, is more complex than that but um, but we, we can always improve and but the first thing that that we need to uh, take care of is how much we let the political parties and the political establishment in Macedonia uh, influence our livelihoods because there is a there is a sizable uh, group of people who are very privileged and as we know uh, the difference between the middle class is shrinking globally and those who are in position to to make money, make more money, and everybody else is just subsisting, you know, with very slim middle class, living month to month, you know, not making a surplus, which in terms of uh, modern day economics is, I can digest that, you know, <clears throat> but um, the people, who, the those who are in power and who are heading institutions, hospitals, schools, a lot of these people are not doing their job. You know, I saw some pictures from uh, the hospital in Bitola. There were pictures um, some years ago, ten years ago, from the uh, from the dormitories in, in Skopje, 
Oh, yeah. They were deplorable. You know, it's a beautiful edifice, the yes. Gosse Dolce home. Yes. It's a brutalist, brutalist uh, architecture. Yeah. Fantastic. So it, it looks uh, very, very amusing. You know, it's it's a tourist. It can be a tourist yes. attraction. Yes. You can put a museum in it, take it to brutalism. You can do wonders with it. You know, just yes. if you use your imagination. Yes. But what they, they left it to neglect. You know, like I said, this is partially due to uh, Macedonians not having a tradition of institution building and management hmm. and these people were uh, you know left alone you know political appointees you know all they care is to not only get their salary but any funds that are meant to be dedicated to the improvement of these institutions and buildings they, they find ways to pilfer to steal this this money to to spin around you know to feed the party machine they all do that they all feed the party machine they make their party soldiers happy yeah you know and meanwhile the people you know the people are are i, I i'm gonna come back to the, the 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 photos the footage from from the hospital these are things that that you can fix yeah you know you yeah. can i i bet that if you're the director of the uh of the manager of the hospital in bitola you can find you can ask your friends you can get volunteers to come and put some tiles and clean up put some signs so that people tell the tell the staff there get a reception desk so that when you walk in in there you're not like you're you're lost in space you know I? you don't know where to go who yeah. to ask mm. you know these are all basics fundamentals and they don't do it the fault of the people is that we put up with it we put up with it we put up with it you know mm. because we're single individual yeah. entities yeah and uh, there is no yes. Uh, there is no like we the, don't the, the, the lack of nation and institutional building, yeah. but also there is no community building because right. the village structure has been Destroyed. done away with, yeah. and we live in these cities and everybody is like atomized. So you know these are some of the challenges for Macedonia ahead. You know the interesting thing is that sixty-five percent of the people didn't vote at the referendum. Sixty-five, yeah. That's an incredible amount. That suggests apathy. That suggests a sense of powerlessness. That suggests that they didn't agree with the propositions. That also suggests that they didn't trust the voting procedure. Am I right on that? Uh, <clears throat> there has been uh, election fraud, and I'm not an expert to speak on that, but. Um, to concur with you, yes, uh, people are discouraged, not all, but when you hear uh, about cases, cases about corruption in the news, and um, when you hear that the policewoman who um, some years ago, I forget when, not, not, it was like 2017 or 18, uh, just in the change of government, when Sudasama got to power, and um, they tried to uh, uh, to issue a, a, a <coughs> parking ticket for uh, uh, to to a functionary of Dewey of the head Albanian of right. the main Albanian party, and and there was a scuffle and, and somebody had roughed the policewoman, you know, and she spoke out and she was removed from her position, you know. Hmm. Uh, so this is. Uh, this political elite shows that they can trump down, they can stem down uh, any, uh, you know, resentment towards the any any um, moral and and formal uh, vehicle way to uh, to follow the law. Yeah. And the people see that and they they get discouraged, understandably. You know, so, which is um, which shouldn't be the case. You know. People should build up from the ground and and start to speak up, organize, and find a way to play the system like the system plays them. Mm. You know, it's about human rights. Mm. It's, it, this isn't about ethnic rights. Mm. It isn't about religious rights or percentages. It's about human rights. Yeah. And this is the rights of all, all the, the humans in, in, in Macedonia. Macedonia. Yeah. So there should be really a separation of power, shouldn't be? That there shouldn't be this. Uh, whichever party comes into power then controls jobs that, for the bureaucracy, even jobs in companies. 
when you have such a system that's uh, so interlocked that if you speak up against the current party you might lose your, your job, your position. Is there any wonder that people don't have any pride in their country? They don't have any belief in their country and in the institutions. Yeah. So <clears throat> what can we do? What can we do? Because yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's like being part of the Balkans for, I guess, I don't know for how long, but certainly since independence. What I hear is this party controls that company, that party controls this company, and if you want to get a job there, you've got to be you got to commit to voting for them. Now that's not politics, that's actually corrupt, and that's more than corrupt, it's actually forcing yeah. people to do what they're told. Well, undemocratic. Well, Jivan, to, uh, to be completely, um, you know, <clears throat> straightforward and, and honest in this regard, this is just a continuation of, of uh, the forms of corruption, the mentality of corruption uh, that that is um, existed in the socialist that era? exists on a global on scale global, yeah, yeah. you know um, the revolving door in, in in Western democracies people leaving government going into corporations you know isn't it the same thing well this is on the on, on the very lowly level it that is. impacts people directly I'm you glad know? you brought that up I yeah. agree I mean I, I don't you know we shouldn't be disillusioned that oh it's only Macedonia and, and Albania and the Balkans that and Bosnia you know Western Balkan Balkans countries that have this problem with corru endemic corruption it is endemic corruption it is but you know it, it isn't misery doesn't come <laughs> all by itself you know it, it's compounded by uh, by global trends and 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 everything everything and and what we can do is is we can you know, find a way to not allow this to uh, to weigh down upon us. You know, we have to find the emotional strength to uh, to um, you know maintain a positive attitude. You know, to put on a human face and, and work towards change. And work towards change. You know, do your best. Like I said, basics. You know, the basics. Mm. Just appreciate what you have. I I know it's for for a lot of people. Uh, it isn't much. And and for 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 you know a percentage of the people, uh, there is abject poverty. You know people cannot like, you know there are cases in the in the news in this news portals about a family of you know a family needing help to fix the roof because uh, you know it's it's a lot of cases like that. You know I met one such person. Yeah, yeah. Recently. So so if if there are uh, if if people weren't so. Um, you know, like like deeply affected by corruption and by this uh, resignation, um, an apathy towards and, and it. An apathy. They 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 can um, use their drive to to get together. You know, find out there is a case. Okay, let's go and let's do something because there is a lot of things that you can do, and and this can uh, this doing gives back to you. Mm. You know, it mm. fulfills you emotionally when you mm -hmm. when you commit mm -hmm. to. Uh, to positive deeds, mm. you know, mm. for example, like like from very simple things to more complex things to organize to change the structure within a municipality, um, you know, to to mediate between, um, you know, families who are in a conflict or within the family, or even like to to visit a village where there is only uh, like few people still remain uh, living there. Mm. You know, when you go and you when you visit. It's an event for those people, you know. There are villages like that. They're fascinating. I know. In, in Macedonia. I know. That's my father's village. Yeah. Six people left out Six of eight hundred. Wow. Plus. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so what you're talking about is say, ad hoc grassroots uh, organizations. Let's clean up this bit of the city. Let's do this. Let's. That sort of stuff yeah. is probably the only way because, if we talk about our leadership. Are there any are there any political parties here that you would have faith in you personally? Um, no, as of as of right now, no, because it isn't the political party that you have faith you you, you can have faith in. It's the people who um, appoint them. Who, who you know? Yeah, yeah. It's is there? Uh, you know, <coughs> the executive committee, the you know, and and they have to. Uh, do a better job at selecting the people whom they will put up for uh, during elections. You know, uh, people in parliament, they, they really have to, to choose 
you know, people who are autonomous, who know what they're doing, and who, uh, when I say autonomous, I mean uh, people who, who don't have to uh, go to the party boss to, to, to ask, uh, well, was the party, well, there is always that, was the party line, but mm -hmm. then, you know, if you have a different view on, 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 on an issue, you know, but, but we're far, far from that. That's like like deep democracy. We're far from that, still. Um, but um, you know, the the more <clears throat> the area that, that that needs to get focus is community building along um, professional lines and, and, and common interests. Yeah. You know? And there are examples. There are very fine examples. Uh, there is one group called Me Bidi yeah. You know, it, it translates to "Don't be a garbage." Yeah. Um, and um, they go to um, places that are covered in, in garbage and trash clean and they, they clean it up and they've done a wonderful job cleaning up and they um, it's an informal group but I'll yep. say their members some of their members got they were apprehended by the police because they were cleaning up the um, Promoting positive thoughts, positive actions, no good. They were apprehended because they were picking up trash from the uh, from the from the uh, police, uh, from the Ministry of Interior, uh, from the from the from around that building, and, and from in front of the government. And picking you up know, that trash was exposing yeah, the problem of absolutely. the police. In, in Bitola, there was a group uh, that I don't know what they're if they're still doing it, uh, but there was a group that um, that. Uh, put uh, nylon bag liners on on the lamp post. Yep, yep. Uh, they they put garbage bins uh, so that people can <laughs> you know they and, and they promoted this on social media. And I think what happened was the municipality removed all that. You know, so this is what they they feel they feel that there is there are challenges to their uh, uh, to their uh, to their attempts at. To, to their making a positive uh, change. I'm, I'm looking for a word, word, word incapability, inability to, to, or unwillingness or whatever it is to, to do their job. Well, to me, Zoran Zayev epitomizes all the problems. A criminal, a corrupt criminal who can get into power, enrich himself, sell out the name, do whatever he's got to do, and it's all for himself. And if that is the leader, and if people continue to vote for him, there is no hope. But the important thing that you've mentioned before that I'd like to say is, what is our future considering where we're at now and considering that we're part of this corrupt world that we spoke about earlier, uh, the Bidens and the Pelosi's and all that, what can we do as people in, in Macedonia? Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a future for us? I mean, can yeah. we change anything? Well, Yeah, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> the possibility for undertaking uh, efforts that can can bring change, there is always that. Uh, but you know, I mentioned before, I said uh, you know, start with the basics, and also this is another basic uh, notion. Uh, there is a lot of negative news uh, that concern Macedonians, you know predominantly you know with the negotiation with Bulgaria the name change and all that and there is a rift but there is a division between Macedonians you know these Severjani who are you know accept anything who, just who, let's who, move on with yeah, our lives who, who I guess are you know it's 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 like it's not defined like who who is all se uh, a Severjan a northern yeah. Yeah, yeah. Macedonian but but I guess the people who uh, who don't are who, who are not gung-ho uh, Macedonia one and forever you know, and then there is that faction. Um, so there is news that that there are news that that impact both, and and people receive this news uh, very painfully. You know, so what I have to say to 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 Macedonians here in Macedonia, in the United States, in Canada, everywhere, regardless of where you're located, um, be aware of the news, right? But don't let it uh, uh, dishearten you. Dishearten you, and hold and, you and, back and, and, from and being involved. Don't don't allow uh, an emotional reaction, either to hate the other faction mm -hmm. or to hate somebody else, or to get really angry 
you want to punch a wall or something you know because the that way the evil will have uh one uh one it will have achieved its uh, its purpose its goal yeah, which is to divide and rule us yeah yeah and and you know wherever that 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 uh comes from you know regardless of that um just keep a cool head and and find a positive thing to do and just don't be so toxic you know it's very easy it's a low hanging fruit to be to be toxic you know it's a very lowly emotion you know i believe people are better than that people can rise above their current level of of the the self so that you know they can for starters behave differently than than that civilly friendly yeah without yeah. being ju judging someone oh he looks albanian or he looks this therefore he's that yeah. or he's a yeah. severianets or severianets as yeah. you say uh, therefore yeah. he's no good cuz uh, in a way we're all, all we're all products of the situation that we find ourselves in you know? yeah yeah there, there are very uh, there are many contentious issues like uh, education <coughs> you know should be inclusive uh, should should they should it address uh, um, you know gender equality and and, <coughs> and um, the LGBTQ yeah. plus uh, issue question um, and and this is a, this is another contentious issue and I say okay I respect I empathize with both sides uh, but I think the healthy thing thing to do is find the middle because this way you will battle the the opposite faction mm -hmm. and and you're never going to reach a common ground where you can feel comfortable with what you want to achieve to preserve your um, your platform for how we should be and you know I'm glad you brought up the LGBT thing because what people don't realize is that well into the 80s police in Australia were beating up gay people even gay people were being killed so the gay community began its struggle in the late 60s, early 70s over there. And it's it took them 40, 50, 60 years and they're still struggling. Now, that's a cultural change. It can't be imposed upon the people. And the gay community here has been to be prepared to do the struggle that was done in America and in Australia. I don't know if you've heard of the gay Mardi Gras in Sydney? No. Well, it's attracts up to half a million million people watching gay gay pride marches yeah. now that gay pride march started as a protest against police brutality in the 70s against gay people yeah. and at that march that first march the cops beat the crap out of them so if gay people want to change the values of this society they have to partake in the struggle they can't insist on it being imposed because you cannot impose values from above yeah. values must evolve and change yeah. through struggle through education yeah. when it when it becomes ideological <coughs> when it's not on the uh, on the personal humane <coughs> level when you when you either have empathy <coughs> regarding uh, different people you know ethnic wise or <coughs> whatever um, when it's ideological when it comes from top down um, it's not going to work. It, it, it's not going to work. It becomes ideological. There are people who become wide-eyed, and they proselytize. They try to promote to, to to shove these values in in other people's faces, and and it's counterproductive. Look, I it's, would say in the West, in the West, certainly in some American states and some places in Australia, people are just as conservative and anti-gay as what they are everywhere else. I'm so this sure idea are, that the yeah. West is somehow more liberated is nonsensical it's still in the process of of changing itself now we can't change people here when our culture of has been around for 2000 years we can't click our fingers and change the law and expect people to work differently that's not yeah. how humans work yeah. like you said top down ideological impositions they don't change culture they don't change humanity they ch they create uh, divisions and those divisions serve the same purpose as the national division yeah. serve. Yeah. That's for people yeah. to, to hate just, each other. Just open, open your mind, real. both sides. Open your mind and find the middle. Bro, it's uh, hard to do, but yeah. I think uh, we've gone for over an hour. Uh -huh. but, really? Wow. Yeah, but okay. uh, there's one more question that I want you to... Uh, I don't know. Please um, ask it. Um, 
I hope it's about the diaspora because we started there. Uh, we <laughs> okay, well, we can speak about uh -huh. maybe two more questions. Okay. My question was, um, you know something about the diaspora, so we'll get back to it later because you were part of the diaspora. But here, I want to know, do you, are you optimistic about the future? Uh, can we resolve these problems? Can we help our economy grow? Can we lift people out of poverty? Uh, <clears throat> I am optimistic. Yeah, I am. Uh, because there are beautiful things happening in Macedonia. Uh, there are all <coughs> forms of um, social and professional life um, outside the institutions. Mm. Okay? Um, from, from, from what I know, from what I have gathered, um, some um, uh, faculties uh, at, at the state university, they're doing well, they're doing research. Uh, they produce, um, um, you know, good, um, good uh, cater, but uh, others are, there is very, very little um, meaningful research that's being conducted in respect to life in Macedonia, you know, uh, so that we get a sense of what are the ails of society and put, put that into perspective through numbers. We need data. Right. You know, because at this point it's just impressionistic, it's not impressionistic. fact based. Yeah, yes, yes. We need we need facts. We need facts about um, the ethnic divide or ethnic divides, um, perceptions, um, health. You know everything. We need to get into account everything. Uh, take everything into account. Um, but outside of institutions, there are uh, you know. There is people in Macedonia are living, you know, it's not like it's not miserable I don't know what people in the diaspora think there is a lot of negative perception and, and some of it holds You know, I can't say it isn't uh, like that uh, But there are positive things It's not all doom and gloom um, But we have to strive for better and uh, economy wise uh, there are going to be significant changes in the economy based on uh, all the you know the events in the, in the world uh, thing that take place in the world right now, um, digitalization, um, you know the robotics uh, revolution. We need to start thinking along those lines because we can't um, live in a bubble. We can't live in a bubble. We 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 can't do uh, things the same way they were done uh, 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago. There has to be a change. And I think Macedonians are not great risk takers when it comes to finance, investments, and all that. And <clears throat> you know, the people who, well, again, I'm, I'm just like this is uh, from my own impression, but I, I wish to see a, a change in that regard to, to modernize um, the the economy and um, in the social sphere. Uh, I'll say it again. Uh, you know these uh, social structures support networks for people who are in need support networks for people who are uh, maybe perhaps addicted to um, chill pills you know yeah. because there is that also um, and we just need to open up just open up start doing things more you know maybe you know people need to consider uh, sign up for dancing you know, dance the oro. You know, mm. I say Macedonia will uh, cease to exist as a culture, as a country, as an identity when people stop dancing the oro. Because I see, I saw it in the United States, people <coughs> who are third generation Macedonians, that. maybe part, you know, they're of uh, part Macedonian heritage. They dance the oro. They, yeah, maybe yeah. they can't speak English. That's right, that's I mean, right. Macedonians, but, right. but but they dance the oro. Celebrating and, and our they, culture. And they relish in it. You know, they, they really, it, it, it lifts them up because it's a very symbolic uh, thing, this this oro. You know, yeah. it, 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 the, the very word itself is it's ura. You know, like, like dance oro. Dance therapy, brother. Dance therapy. Yeah, just like the indigenous people used to do. One more, one more. Yeah. I mean, we could keep yeah, going. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of non-Macedonians coming to Macedonia to start businesses and to live here. I've run into a few and what they say to me is that they love the Macedonian people um, and yet we don't love ourselves as much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, 
I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's uh, uh, for people who live in Macedonia, for, for diaspora, people from the diaspora who come back to visit. Um, um, you have to like find a way how to accept uh, things and people, how people are. There are differences. You know, if you move from Australia here or anywhere else, uh, people do things on a different yeah. th- time sca- yeah. schedule. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and for a start, it's it's at a different level of, of uh, prosperity, different facilities yeah. like going to yeah. a hospital here, yeah. public hospital, yeah. you freak out. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff. Um, I'm saying, don't, don't let it freak you out. Yeah, don't, don't let it dissuade you from from doing something about or with Macedonia. Yeah, that's right. And um, uh, you know, people. There, are, I know, I know for a fact there are so many people in the diaspora, Isalenici. Uh, you know, which everybody <coughs> wants, but Isalenici essentially, yeah. um, who want to do something but they don't know how to do it. They don't know where to turn because people have been burned many times before by politicians, uh, by people who come and they, they they beat the patriotic drum and people give money. They used to give money and then nothing happened. You know, so um, there needs to be. We we need to explore ways how to build. Um, connections between Macedonia, the diaspora, so that there is a bridge of trust between communities. So that, let's say, you're in Canada and you're originally from uh, Prespa, uh, you know, and you, you you want to do something, you want to see a change in, in your home uh, area, in yep. your home tribe. Yep. You know, um, we can do things like this, you know, improve the school maybe somebody from 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 there from uh from the diaspora some uh somebody studying uh whatever anything anthropology education uh health you know public health whatever they come can, back they, devote they, some of your some of your lifetime do, to f- this. find something to do mm. and 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 i know that a lot of people will get discouraged because they will reach out and nobody will respond to their email there isn't going to be enthusiasm, but but it takes time to build uh, a support network yeah. here, uh, so that people know where their money goes. Yeah, you know, this yeah. is important because nobody wants to give money, and and, and where is the money? You know, it needs to be there. Needs to be something to, to see the effects, the fruits of your uh, literally physical labor in the diaspora. That's true, but also some people in the diaspora look for reasons not to give. Uh, I know the diaspora in Australia and uh, in 1949 uh, literally a handful of Macedonians mainly from Ege, uh, maybe two, three thousand of them were able to raise 11,000 pounds for the hospital in Bitola and 11,000 pounds in those days would buy you 11 houses. Now I've tried uh, various uh, fundraisers and we can barely scrape ten thousand dollars together. And the excuse that they use is the people are going to spend it on something they shouldn't. Now I appeal to my people in in the <laughs> diaspora to stop being so negative and to accept that there are differences and to accept that Rome wasn't built in a day. But you have to continue to contribute if you want to build Macedonia. We have to. I believe we have to hold our our leaders to account. And not just the leaders at the top, but like, for example, the leaders, the people who run the hospital. People should say, hey, what is wrong here? Yeah. Clean it up. It doesn't need much to be clean. Uh, this, we can fix it. We can ask for $2,000 from the, as- the diaspora to fix the plumbing. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the Albanian diaspora, you know, this is a very uh, positive <clears throat> example. And, and Macedonians should think about this. Um, there are examples where they have fixed or built entire schools in Macedonia. The more, most recent example I saw in Kumanovo, where they built a, a very nice uh, uh, gym. Right. You know? and, right. And it's, you know, <laughs> things are this, this are possible. It doesn't take much. It takes 10,000 people to give $1 per month. That's what I tell to, them. To do wonderful That's what things. I tell you them. Know? But, but we also need the capacity here. Yeah, you know we, but but th- I think th- th- there is some of that, but and I think, we can start building on that. But I think, uh, I don't think I think most people here are well intentioned too. Uh, I don't know when the trust was was uh, was lost over there. I don't know, 
but it was lost and one of the things that I want to do is build our trust back up so that if there's 90,000 of us and out of those 90,000 if 10% of us are actual patriots and there's I mean 9,000 of us if we all gave a hundred bucks a year that's nine hundred thousand dollars here the transformation of our hospitals our, our schools would be phenomenal yeah. so we've got to stop talking and we've got to stop acting we've got to we've got to have faith in ourselves too we've got to have confidence in ourselves and we've got to love our people across the oceans Absolutely. Absolutely. and that's yeah. what listening to you uh, you, you're one of the people that inspires me. Uh, speak to Yane, Yane Boyaji yes, yesterday. Yeah. Uh, his, his talk inspired me. Um, Victor Lilchik Adamson, uh, I went to his office. Man, his office is like, uh, I don't know, it's so modest. It's, it's, it's terrible, you know, in so many ways. Yet he's <laughs> out there uh, digging and writing and analyzing. And he drives a 40, 50 year old Lada. He's probably on some pathetic wage yet his commitment is total and we over there <laughs> what do we do i want them to see me because this is this is important we do what we do over there is when we have a wedding you know what we do we've got the star of kutlesh we run in with gaidi and everything we say make it don't see make it don't see but unfortunately when it comes to money money talks and the bullshit over there walks. Martin, I want to thank you very much. We're going to do this, you and me, over Skype or over Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're ready, we can do it as many times as you want. I really enjoyed our conversation, brother. We're going to take uh, the vision of Scorpio as we go down. And is there anything else you'd like to say to my people in Macedonia? And uh, not in Macedonia, Australia, yeah. Canada and that? Yeah, well, <clears throat> uh, I've, <laughs> I've I've tried to uh, uh, I mean I hope I have uh, um, sent some positive uh, messages some positivity to for uh, to the people um, so I don't know what else to say um, you know while have I was, faith yeah, have faith yeah, I mean ha absolutely you can't do much without having faith you know it's it's a very it's a human uh, thing to 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 have to do. Um, yeah, um, while I was living in uh, in the U.S., um, um, I was <clears throat> uh, nurturing my uh, my Macedonian spirit by uh, listening to various music from Macedonia, including you know uh, rock music, pop music, folk music, modern music, and there is amazing music that comes out from Macedonia. Even even uh, Roma music, you know, yeah, gy gypsy, yeah, yeah. gypsy wedding music, you know, unbelievable, uh, amazing stuff. You know, it's, it's like jazz, but through and on, on different terms. Yes, yes. You know, and um, I read some books, um, some <coughs> novels. You know, I, I tried to, uh, to to keep abreast to 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 maintain this uh, uh, this part of the, uh, the connection the, the, with the, the what's happening. Connection, you know, within um, and and Australia is far away. Canada is far away. The United States is far away. Germany may be closer yeah, and, and yeah, country, yeah, you yeah. know in, in the West um, but it's I, I, th I think it's essential to uh, to 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 harbor um, emotion for um, for Macedonia as an idea as a place as a people because a lot of people I understand are they weren't born in Macedonia um, a lot of people were born the especially the Aegean Macedonians but yet nevertheless they still have a connection to Macedonia. It is their bridge to the idea, to the past, which was so painful to them. Mm. You know, and for example, I discovered um, uh, um, a, a musician, Macedonian from uh, from Greece, from Northern Greece mm. uh, today, uh, Dina Donev. Mm -hmm. you know, he has a project, uh, Chepkalo. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting, you know, it's, it's different music, it's jazz. Yeah. But <coughs> but there is, he, he was inspired uh, some songs were inspired by by Macedonian music and his uh, exploration of, of the of his Macedonian heritage. Um, so yeah, it's it's Macedonia. It's a beautiful story. I mean, the the history as it is presented is very complex, uh, but it's very simple. You know, Macedonians were they started out as a simple people, straightforward people. Uh, the mountains and the hills determined uh, their personality. Um, <coughs> 
I think Macedonia in the middle centuries was like like Tibet on the Balkans, a lot of uh, monasteries, a lot of spirituality. The Bogomils. The Bogomils. Yeah, and so there is something, and, and if you if you feel a calling that there is a calling, you know maybe you can answer it. One more thing, I have a friend from Aegea. He didn't know he was Macedonian until he was 14 years old. Before then, he said, "I didn't know what I couldn't find any Macedonians anywhere." He's from Solonsko, near Pella. At 14, his grandfather says. In Greek, because the kids, they weren't taught yeah. Greek because they were afraid the kids might speak in Greek and betray the whole family. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he said, grandson, I've got to tell you, we are Macedonian. Uh -huh. I spent years in jail for being a Macedonian. Uh -huh. He said, from that day on, everywhere I went, I ran into Macedonian. So he became a dentist. But what he did was he went to all the villages throughout Ege and he sought out old people and asked them to sing old Macedonian folk songs. He has 1,100 recordings of different Macedonian songs. That's 1,100 songs That's that would have been lost. Yeah. Now, I salute that guy, you know. No, Gosta, you know who I'm talking about, brother. Thank you for everything. And that's the type of people that inspire me, you know. People who, like yourself, you know, you have Turkish background, but you are Macedonian. And I run into people like that all the time who are part Macedonian and more Macedonian the, than the Chisti Macedonsi. So folks in Mas folks in I didn't talk to the Australians and the Canadians and the Americans. Folks, we are at a critical stage in our in, in our history, but it all is not lost. All will be lost if we don't do anything about it. But if you if you if you want to skite, if you want to show off about being Macedonian, I'm going to say it again. Put your money where your mouth is or come here and put your money in a business. Thanks very much, folks. We're going to show you Skopje in one second. Oh, is that me? Nikola Savini. <laughs> 